Look, I love my custom NeoVim config and fancy ZSH setup as much as the next guy. But when something goes wrong in my home lab and I'm SSH'd into Chewy over here or NASTY, all I've got to diagnose those problems is good old fashioned bash and vanilla vim. That's why this year I'm using Advent of Code to teach myself some bash and get reacquainted with no plugin vim. So let's talk about how I'm doing that and why I think you should too. This year and into 2025, I've committed myself to learning some fundamental Unix systems administration skills, as well as some DevOps and cloud engineering type stuff. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there is next to nothing more fundamental to Unix systems administration than knowing your basic bash, some core utils like awk and sed, and no plug in vim. And that's because these are the tools you're gonna have access to almost guaranteed, no matter what server you're SSHing into. Now, as we learn skills like this, there are three things that we want to learn effectively. That's authentic problems, problems that are like the ones you'll be solving in the real world, authentic setting or environment, so the tools match the tools you'll have available to you when you're solving those problems, and three, rapid formative feedback. And what that means is you just need to know if what you did worked or didn't work and maybe a pointer in the right direction. Now, when you're first learning, it can be difficult to get all of those things. At least it used to be. Advent of Code solves a problem of, I don't know what to practice on, and I don't know if I did it right, by giving us an entire advent calendar of interesting computer science-y problems to solve. So if you see here, we're on adventofcode.com, I'm already logged in, and it gives you this list of interesting problems, one for each day in December up until Christmas. So on day one, it gives us this background, something about elves and Christmassy things, something to give it the Christmassy vibe. But the real meat and potatoes of the problem is written down here. So you see, it gives us some example input. It's almost always some text file full of stuff that's uniformly formatted that you'll have to parse to produce some numeric value or output at the end. In this case, for day one, we've got two lists of numbers. They're sort of like vertical in the file. And our goal here is to pair up the smallest number in the leftmost list with the smallest number in the rightmost list and do that all the way down in ascending order, I guess. Then you'll calculate the differences between those values and sum those differences. At the end, you'll have some value, but that's just the example. If you wanna actually solve your problem, because a unique one is created for every single individual who logs in, which is so cool, go down here, click get your puzzle input. It's a massive input file full of text. The example, you could probably do it by hand, but this you're definitely solving computationally. Now, once you've solved your problem or you think you have, you can put in whatever answer your code is spitting out, let's say a one, two, three, and submit. When you do, this is the rapid formative feedback part. It tells you if your answer is right or wrong. Even better, if you want some hints or some help, there's an entire subreddit devoted to helping people out through Advent of Code. All right, so Advent of Code is giving us rapid formative feedback on authentic problems. Now all we have to do is set up some sort of authentic environment to work in. And lucky for us, that's really easy to do because it's just any unconfigured Linux system. I'm gonna get that system by SSHing into Chewy. <laughs> but if you don't have some other box that's unconfigured, you can sort of revert your ZSH configuration um, or empty out your vimrc pretty easily. For example, over here, I've got this like Ubuntu WSL setup. I can just jump into bash. So my ZSH config is now, you know, kind of tucked away and I'm working just in bash. And my vimrc is empty because I use NeoVim as my actual editor and vim is just, well, the editor I use when I need tabs, <laughs> which like is for make files and stuff. Okay, so we've got a simple bash setup and an empty vim config. Now all that's left is to go about the learning process. If you've never learned any vim before, I think the best way to get started is just to jump into vim tutor. Vim tutor comes installed whenever you install vim, at least I think it does. Uh, and it's a little tutorial, it tells you about 30 minutes to teach you the basics of vim motions and just how to be productive in vim. Once you've gone through vim tutor, the way that I plan on learning some more Vim is to go through practical Vim. Now, I'm not nuts. I'm not gonna read this front to back in like five days. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just flip through the book and look for a feature that seems interesting and just try that as I work on that day's advent of code problem. I think it's really easy to overload yourself by trying to read through everything in a book like this all at once, when really the best way to learn it is to try it as you go. You do a little bit of formal learning by reading, you do a little bit of practical learning by doing, and you just go through those iterative cycles back and forth. So that's pretty much everything, but I would feel bad if I let you go without giving you a few tips, especially if you're just beginning with Bash and with Vim. So here's a couple of 
no plugin Vim features that make the development process a lot nicer. We're gonna start by just opening up Vim. And if we use colon capital E lowercase x, that's a, this is Net Explorer, Vim's built-in file explorer, we can look through all of the files in a directory and even navigate up and down different directories. So I can open up my bash script over here. This is a completely unfinished piece of crap <laughs> that I'm still working on. If you've never written a bash script before, there's a couple of things you'll need to do. So let's make a new one. I'm gonna do that in Vim with colon E, E for edit. And we're gonna do, we're gonna call this just test script, test.sh. What you need to do at the top is give it a shebang line. This tells it what interpreter to use to execute this script. On most Linux systems, uh, if we want bash, that's gonna be slash user slash bin slash bash. And then we'll just throw some something in here to show that it works. We'll echo hello world and we'll give this a run. So I'm gonna close Vim, but there are a lot better ways to jump back and forth between Vim and your shell, which we'll get to. We've got our test.sh. You'll notice that my day one part one shell script is green, but this one is gray. The reason for that is because we haven't marked this script as executable yet. So we're gonna use shmod plus x, plus x to make it executable and then test.sh. So what this means is we're changing what we can do with this text file. So now that we've shmod plus x test.sh, it turns up green and we can run it with period forward slash test.sh and it gives us our hello world. Now let's say we wanna iterate back and forth and see what this script does. There are much better ways than opening and closing Vim over and over again. So let's open up test.sh with Vim. One easy way built into Bash to jump back and forth between an application is to background it. So we can do that fairly simply by typing control Z. That'll put it in the background. You can see it says one plus stopped Vim. Now we can run test.sh and we can open Vim back up again by foregrounding it with FG. So there it is. Oh, I guess I forgot to save it. So it didn't update. Another even quicker way to do this is to use Vim's built-in terminal, which is awesome. So if we do colon term, we have a terminal up here. Uh, you can see it opens up with my ZSH configuration because that's the default for new sessions. We won't worry about that too much, um, but I can do the usual stuff. I can run test.sh. If we wanna navigate between these two panes in Vim, we can type control W and then we use our usual navigation keys. So in this case, I can go J to move to this one because it's lower and I can do control W K to go up into the next pane. One last thing, I hate the vertical separation like that, having one pane on top and one on the other. If you wanna split Vim down the middle, like vertically, then we just say vertical and then term. And now we've got them side by side. So now we can iterate back and forth and go echo hello world times times three. And I can jump over here and run test.sh and I can control W L and jump over here. And now I've got a fairly decent back and forth thing that would usually require like Tmux or something like that, all in Vim. So that's the whole game plan. I'll be going through Advent of Code, just a couple of them, reading a little bit of practical Vim and writing some bash in zero configuration Vim. If you wanna follow along with any of this, I'll be posting everything in the blundered name advent underscore 2025 on my GitHub, which I'll be linking down below. That's, yeah. If you're trying out the challenge yourself, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you found this interesting, I'd love it if you subscribed. Anyways, I'll catch you next time.